So I'll be the first person to get expelled from Congress without a conviction or without committing treason. And it sets dangerous new precedent for the future to come. It's the demise of this body eventually. All right. So, you know, I'll go to, I'll go to you, Will, since okay. you started. All right. Santos hasn't been convicted of a crime. Right. What are we doing here? Later. Democrat leading by 10. Put that in perspective. In this section of the district, the Nassau County section of the district, in 2022, the midterm elections when George Santos won, Santos won Nassau County by 10 points. That is a Steve, swing let me, tonight. Let me just interrupt you there for one second, Steve, just to announce that Republican candidate Mazie Pillip has conceded the race. She has conceded uh, to Tom Swasey uh, tonight in the third congressional district. So that means the Democrats have added one Democrat. All right, guys. So this is going to be a very, very, very sober video because I can't even be that mad about the outcome of this special election that happened in New York's third district, a.k.a. the district that George Santos was representing. Uh, he was a Republican. They got ousted by Republicans uh, over allegations of fraud and lying about his resume and other things that haven't actually really been proven in the court of law yet. He hasn't actually been found guilty of anything. But Republicans, the weakest political party in American history, the modern day Republican Party, that is in 2024, decided to do a virtue signal to oust George Santos anyways from the House, again, over allegations that were not proven. And unfortunately, I was right about the result of what would happen in the special election, which was that nobody would give one F, one flying flip about Republicans virtue signaling by kicking George Santos out the House and that Democrats would flip this seat back blue, which shows the incompetence of the Republican Party. We have no proof and evidence that Republicans taking the high road actually helps Republicans in regards to votes. OK, what's going to happen is that that district, George Santos's district, is going to have a special election. And Democrats are already pouring millions of dollars into that district race in order to flip that seat, a seat that has historically been a Democrat seat. It got flipped during the midterms. And most likely is going to be flipped back blue. So I believe that Republicans basically are giving the Democrats a seat um, and they're not gaining anything from it. Right. They don't gain anything from it because it's not like people are going to go out and vote and say, oh, well, you know, Republicans voted to expel George Santos. We're going to replace him with another Republican. Now, again, I could be wrong. If voters do go out and they vote and they say, oh, well, we're going to replace George Santos with another Republican, then I'm wrong. Right. Maybe. Just maybe voters will think about the fact that Republicans did the right thing and that they were above the fray and that they will replace George Santos with another Republican. And therefore, it will be a wash. Right. Republicans will win because they got rid of a bad apple and they still kept the seat. However, I don't think that's going to happen, guys. There's no proof and evidence that the Democrats taking the low road actually hurts them. Politics is not hard, guys, <laughs> right? It's really not hard to make these predictions in politics, okay? I'm just keeping it 100 with you. All you got to do is just pay attention. Just pay attention. Because like I said then, and I'm saying it now, there's no proof and evidence that Republicans gain anything by taking the high road, okay? You do not gain points in politics by saying that we're, we're above it. We're going to get rid of George Santos, okay? Okay. While also at the same time not getting rid of Bob Menendez, who is still in Congress and he's been charged by the DOJ, Republicans haven't got rid of them. The only thing that Republicans have been able to do is to get rid of one of their own guys and pass virtue signaling bills uh, in favor of Israel. That's all they've been able to do. That's literally the only thing they've been able to accomplish. They can't do anything else besides shoot themselves in the foot and uh, virtue signal for Israel. And what have they gained out of it? What have they gained out of it? They haven't gained a damn thing at all. They never do. They never do. So anyways, let's actually learn a little bit more about this special district election as it had a Democrat candidate, Tom uh, Suozzi, who is a moderate, right? But he's still a Democrat uh, in this election versus 
uh, Mozzie Phillip, who is the Republican candidate. She is an Ethiopian woman who's actually Israeli. She actually fought in the, um, she actually served in the Israeli military as well, too. However, she basically is damn near Democrat. Because you told the Jewish press, quote, being a Democrat is just a piece of paper and I can switch at any time, end quote. Those are your words. So yes. if that is the case, are you going to switch? I will. After the, after the election, I could not do that right now. It's, it's a legal, technical issue. And I'm in the middle of race. Once it's done, I will. And I'm very proud. Even if you see my uh, voting record as a county legislator, you all, you can see, I'm all about cutting taxes. I'm all about supporting law enforcement. I'm all about supporting small uh, businesses and improving an economy. At the end of the day, when somebody would like to check you, you should go on, on the record how I vote. Yeah, so even basically being a Democrat that's running as a Republican and having multiple infinity stones of wokeness like George Santos uh, couldn't save this woman from defeat. And uh, let's let's go ahead and, and play this news clip and I'll tell you guys why I think that she ultimately got defeated. You shouldn't be surprised by my thesis here, but let's get into it. Can thou project Tom Swazi as the winner? NBC News is projecting that Tom Swazi has won or will win New York's third congressional district. Let's go back to Steve Kornacki at the big board. Yeah, Lawrence, I mean, we were we were saying it without saying it, I think, uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking. But basically what, what we were talking about is what just happened. We were waiting to get another update from Nassau County that would incorporate more of that same day, that Election Day vote, the vote that we figure is the most Republican friendly there is. We just got another batch. We were sitting at 45 percent counted in Nassau County before. Now it's up almost to 60 with the batch that just came in uh, about two minutes ago. And you can see Swazi's lead earlier here was a little high. It was 15. Now it's come down to just a shade over 10 points. But again, with 60 percent of the vote in for Swazi to be 10 points ahead in the Nassau County portion of this district, which is the overwhelming share of the vote in this district for Swazi to be ahead by 10 points right now. Democrat leading by 10. Put that in perspective in this section of the district, the Nassau County section of the district in 2022, the midterm elections when George Santos won. Santos won Nassau County by 10 points. That is a Steve, swing let me, tonight. Let me just interrupt you there for one second, Steve, just to announce that Republican candidate Mazi Pillip has conceded the race. She has conceded uh, to Tom Swazi uh, tonight in the third congressional district. So that means the Democrats have added one Democrat. Probably Tom Swazi will be sworn in tomorrow. Yeah. So the seat count as of right now is 219 to 212, I believe. Republicans have a razor thin majority. Okay. On any type of partisan issue, they only can afford to lose three votes. Okay. Now that extra vote, uh, would be particularly helpful when you're talking about, I don't know, trying to impeach the president or to get some type of bill passed when it comes to protecting the border or any of the other priorities that are in the house. But, you know, so it seems that, uh, the priorities in the house seem again to be, shooting themselves in the foot and, you know, virtue signaling to Israel, right? That seems to be uh, just the, what Republicans really want to do for the most part. But, um, yeah, this is not good news, guys. It's really not. I, I, there's no way I can square this because you would think that given the issues that New Yorkers are facing when it comes to illegal immigration and the immigration crisis affecting the city, that they would vote for somebody who, at least on paper, says they want to close the border if you get if you get elected can you push an agenda a trumpian agenda the border wall remain in mexico title 42 catching uh, deport uh, would that be what where you want to go if you're elected uh, today tomorrow absolutely absolutely i'm all about securing our borders um and uh, giving uh, the the fund that the border control uh, uh, agents they needed to increase the fund uh, to make sure they have the technology the tools they need to secure our borders we need to build a wall we need now with that being said going into 2024 right it, it seems like things are in favor of republicans when it comes to polls but when it comes to actually vote ever since roe v wade was overturned democrats have been winning that that is the honest the god truth and it should be no surprises that in this basically moderate district in Long Island, a district that has been Democrat for a long time, the issue of abortion 
played a big, big, big role in this election. Congressman, are, are you, you saying that you're pro-choice? Uh, are you pro-choice? Every woman should have that right. Well, that's about to laws. The every, that's about laws. It is, it is a personal decision, a personal choice. So every woman should have that choice. I'm not going to tell her what to do. And I made it so clear. It's so personal to me. So you're you, pro-choice. Again, this is a personal choice. Every woman will well, make that decision. You have been lying, lying to the public. Now you have the opportunity to fix it. Go I'm, ahead. I'm asking you very clearly. Are you pro-choice? I made it again. It's a personal Just decision. Just say you're pro-choice. I, Mazi Philip, I am pro-life. This is me. Okay. Am I, do I have a reason for that? Do I have the right for, to be me, Mazi Philip, for life? She's, like for be, life. she's being like Rick no, Mazio no, right now. No, no, I want to deny that. No, no, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Listen to listen. Let, let's, Tom, let's. This is, you are misleading the public. It's okay, not I, let, Let's allow you Mr. Swazi to answer the politics. question here. It, you this are is using his time. everything no, to it's get called, another power. It's That's called all. governing. Governing? Go power. ahead. It's called governing. Go ahead. There are laws in place that yes. Congress members are responsible yes. for. Yes. Will you codify I say, Roe versus Wade? I am Wade? not going to support Excuse me. national uh, That's not what I'm asking you. Excuse me. That's She's all. not letting me that's speak. Not. Let him speak. Okay, let me just ask very, very clearly. These are very specific questions, okay? You have been endorsed by the conservative party. You said the conservative party vetted you, and they're very happy with your position. That's your mouth. That's what you said. You have said that I will not vote to make Roe the law of the land. You have said that the Supreme Court made the right decision by outlawing uh, abortion in the United States of America and putting it back to the states. Right now, in many states throughout the United States of America, abortion is completely banned. So there's a choice as an elected official, if you were to become a member of Congress, would you vote to make Roe versus Wade the law of the land? Yeah, so I want you guys to understand the choices that voters had in this election and what it came down to because it's actually very scary to think about, especially going into 2024. Basically, you have a so-called moderate Democrat, Tom Swosey, who I would not call a moderate considering the fact that this guy literally bragged about kicking ICE out of that county, okay? So he is definitely pro-sanctuary city, okay? He's pro illegal immigrant new york is experiencing massive problems with illegal immigration because of biden's open border policies now this guy is a pro-choice democrat and he faced a what i would probably call a moderate republican in the philip lady who does have you know a ton of infinity stones and wokeness it seems that she has some issues speaking english <laughs> but you know hey <clears throat> maybe in a district like that that doesn't hurt her I, i'm not sure Okay, it definitely seemed to uh, help George Santos in regards to having Infinity Stones awoke this. And by the way, she's an Ethiopian Jew, okay, who, again, is registered Democrat. So she's basically a fake Republican, okay? So I don't know why you kick out one fake Republican <laughs> and you replace them with another fake Republican. I'm not sure how that works, okay? Maybe that has something to do with it. I mean, you should have just ran an actual Republican, right? Why are you running a fake one? run an actual Republican because you would think running a fake Republican would make voters question whether or not she's actually real. Okay. I'm just keeping it 100. You, I mean, this is how incompetent this party is. Okay. They replace one fake Republican with another fake Republican, which would probably raise questions in people's mind about whether or not they're actually voting for a Republican. Again, incompetence, just pure incompetence. But anyways, she ran on being tough on immigration. Um, and she moderated herself on abortion okay a lot okay she moderated herself a lot and she still lost in a year in which democrats are getting hammered across the board on every single issue except abortion so yet when it comes time to vote voters literally are seemingly valuing abortion this abortion issue over literally every single issue in the country that's where we're at. And it's been like that since the midterm elections, ever since Roe v. Wade got overturned. I mean, th there's no other conclusion I can come to. Abortion for a lot of these voters in this country is literally the most important issue. It is more important than the economy, than the border, than crime, than foreign policy, than the president being an empty suit. It is more important than anything. This is what they're voting based off of. So it seems.
But hey, you know, maybe it would have been helpful if Republicans actually would have, I don't know, gave people a reason to vote and gave people confidence that if you elect the Republicans to Congress, that, hey, we're going to actually close the border. We're actually going to fix the issue. You know, like, you know, promote uh, HR2, the Secure the Border Act, instead of going out here and telling people we don't need legislation, <laughs> right? Just to turn around and then have Mike Johnson, who is the Speaker of the House, say that, well, we're not going to bring the legislation that was just passed in the Senate to fund uh, Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan. We're not going to bring that to the floor because we don't have border legislation, which I agree with because we shouldn't be funding these foreign conflicts, right? So I, I do agree with that. Don't bring that legislation to the floor. But you just spent all this time telling us how we didn't need legislation to secure the border. You're going to rely on Joe Biden to use executive orders, aka band-aids to secure the border, instead of actually telling voters that, hey, we have a bill to secure the border. If you vote for us, we can secure the border. But you need to put us in office. You need to give voters a reason to vote for Republicans. I'm frustrated with this party, man. This is the most incompetent political party in history. They don't know how to get people out to vote for them. They don't know how to get people a reason to vote for them. They don't know how to win because they can't come out here and articulate reasons why people should vote for them. All they know how to do is say, well, Democrats bad, Democrats bad. Stand for something, stand for something. Go out there, promote your legislation, vote us in. We're gonna pass this bill. We're gonna secure the border. We don't need half measures. Put your legislation out there because that's what Democrats do. Democrats say, look, if you vote for us, we're going to codify Roe v. Wade in the law. We're going to pass this bill, that bill, this other bill. They give you the names of the bill. People know the names of the bills, but you can't name a bill that Republicans want to pass because they don't promote it. They don't promote it. They spend all their time kicking out their own members and, and passing bills to we denounce Hamas, right? <laughs> that, that's what they do. <laughs> Which, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans. Doesn't amount to anything. And then you wonder why you lose. Because this party is weak. You kicked out your own member. A valuable vote that you need. A vote that gives you a little bit of breathing room. You kicked him out and you gained nothing. Nothing. Nobody went to the voting booth and said, Republicans kicked out George Santos. We're going to replace him with another Republican. Nobody said that, right? Nobody said that. And look, George Santos actually won. He won after Roe v. Wade was overturned. So clearly and obviously, it's possible, right? It is possible for Republicans to flip some seats even despite Roe v. Wade being overturned, even in moderate districts. But I'm telling you, what is happening is that the Republican Party is not giving anybody a reason to vote for them outside of hating Democrats. And it's not enough. They have not shown the ability to actually have an agenda that they're going to push for and that they're going to legislate if people put them in power. They haven't shown the ability to wield power effectively. That is the honest to God truth. And they have absolutely fumbled on this issue of illegal immigration. This is why I kept telling you guys, you don't come out here and say you don't need legislation. Because saying you don't need legislation is basically saying we don't want to do a damn thing about it. And we don't have any solutions. The solution can't be, oh, well, just vote Trump back in an office, right? Because if that's, the, if that's the solution, then why would you vote for any Republicans in the House or the Senate? <laughs> because they're basically showing you that, hey, well, we don't have any solutions. We just going to rely on executive orders, band-aids that can be overturned when the next Democrat gets back in office, right? This is what they said. And then you wonder why people come out here and say, eh, well, why should I vote for Republicans to close the border? They're not actually really trying to do it. They're saying that the, the president can do it. Again, it's, these people are... <sighs> oh, yeah. Only thing I can do is laugh, bro. The only thing I can do is laugh. The only hope that Republicans have is that Trump does not suffer the same type of inability to get elected as Republicans seem to uh, have when it comes to these House and Senate races, right? I I'm hoping that Trump 
does not suffer the same way that these people are suffering because the American people just don't seem to want to put Republicans into Congress. Okay, now again, that can be different at the top of the ticket. It, it looks like we're probably going to have a situation where you get Trump elected. Okay, if the polls are correct, if they hold up, the Republicans will probably lose the House. Uh, and they may keep the Senate, right? They may gain a few votes in the Senate. It looks like the Senate map is very favorable towards Republicans. So that's probably what we're looking at, okay? Which means that, you know, Republicans are going to have a hard time getting things done if Democrats control the House, even if they control the Senate and have the presidency. Uh, it's going to be a stalemate, right? So, um, you know, it, it's not going to be easy for Trump to actually do things um, because Republicans seem to have issues when it comes to these congressional election. So, you know, uh, they got to figure something out. I have no answer for the abortion issue. I, I don't know. We're, we're in new territory, uncharted territory when it comes to handling this issue and the impact that it's having on elections. Even in red states, it doesn't really seem to be an issue that Republicans can win on. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how much of an effect it had in this election. But one thing I do know is that this election um, does kind of indicate that Republicans aren't inspiring too many people to come out and to vote for them to give them more power and that is a major 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 red flag going into 2024 but let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace